On December 2nd, 2010, Valve released the Team Fortress 2 Beta, a developer build of the game that allowed him to test balance changes and bug fixes before pushing him live. The TF2 Beta only ran for about two and a half years, but in that amount of time, a lot of interesting changes were proposed. You had the weapon prototypes that were eventually refined and added to the game, the test stats for weapons that never saw the light of day, and even the occasional wacky idea that completely changed the dynamic of the game, like every class having double their normal health. But out of all the changes made during the TF2 Beta, one in particular made in early 2011 stood out to me. Every melee weapon with the no random crit stat was changed to instead have a 25% damage penalty. What's even more interesting is that, seemingly accidentally, this change actually made it into the game for a full 24 hours alongside the Hatless update. Valve never posted their reasoning for making this change, which leaves us to speculate why they could have done it. Was it for balance? Was it for parity between crit and non-crit enabled servers? And most importantly, was this change successful? So the overall question we need to answer is, was Valve's change to random crits a good idea? And honestly? No, this was a terrible idea. What did you think I was going to say? There's a reason they took it out of the game after a single day. So no, implementing the stat swap as is decidedly wouldn't do the game any favors. But as far as whether Valve was onto something with these changes, I would say that yeah, they actually had the right idea. So instead of just asking a broad question and immediately dismissing it for its flaws, we should probably ask more specific questions to weed out what about this change works and what doesn't. So how about we start by asking, is a 25% damage penalty equivalent to not having random crits? And surprisingly, at least on a surface level, the math does check out. Melee weapons get random crits anywhere between 15 and 60% of the time, and each crit does three times the normal damage. That means at the minimum 15% crit rate, not having crits would subtract 25% of your long-term damage, just as they predicted. At the maximum 60% crit rate, however, a lack of crits means you're missing out on a surprising 55% of your possible sustained damage, so losing crits would theoretically be a massive downside. But of course, we're fighting players, not MVM tanks. We're not doing long-term sustained damage when we hit someone with a melee, we're engaging in a fight that last maybe a couple seconds at most. We have to make more qualitative assessments to see if, in practice, being able to instantly kill someone when you do crit warrants lower damage when you don't. And for most weapons that have this stat, the answer is almost universally no, for one of two reasons. First of all, the majority of weapons that can't get random crits are able to get forced crits. The Market Gardener can get crits while blast jumping, the Bushwhacker can crit Jiradid enemies, the Neon Annihilator gets crits on wet enemies, and so on. So for the weapons that fall under these categories, replacing random crits with a damage penalty would be a direct nerf, since they lose their main functionality in exchange for an upside that's completely repetitive if you play it right. But on the other side of the coin, some weapons can't randomly crit because if they could, it would be incredibly stupid to play against. Weapons like swords, the caber, and the extinguisher would suddenly become ridiculous if they could randomly crit on top of their already good range or damage. So for these weapons, it would almost certainly be a direct buff and would make them almost unfair to play against. So outside of a few exceptions, exchanging the no random crit stat for a damage penalty would absolutely not be worth it. Clearly that fact would tell us that the entire idea should be scrapped, right? Well, this brings us to a second major issue that I've not addressed yet. Up until now, I've been operating under the assumption that these changes would be made with random crits still enabled. But what if, in addition to phasing out the no random crit stat entirely, Valve also turned off random crits by default? That completely reframes the entirety of this change and would solve a major problem that the existence of the no random crit stat currently provides. I, for one, am a firm believer that this stat should be phased out of the game completely. You see, no random crits prevents a bit of a divide in the game balance based on what settings the server you're on is running. As you'd expect, a melee weapon not being able to randomly crit significantly lowers its combat effectiveness. So this creates a weird scenario where weapons with a no random crit stat have two effective versions, a weaker version that exists on crit enabled server and a stronger version that exists on crit disabled servers. The best example of this concept is the Southern Hospitality. If you're playing on a server where melees can randomly crit, the choice between the Southern Hospitality and stock is a pretty nuanced one to make. You can exchange the ability to occasionally kill enemies in one hit for a more consistent damage over time effect that also offers mild utility. Which option people prefer is ultimately up to personal choice, and most would agree that in these instances, these two wrenches are pretty close to being equal. However, on servers that have random crits turned off, you're not really losing anything by choosing to run the Southern Hospitality over stock. Sure, there's a mild fire damage vulnerability, but taking that for an almost guaranteed 40 more damage per hit and free spy checking is an absolute steal. So on servers that disable random crits, the Southern Hospitality is almost a direct upgrade over the stock wrench. And while this is the most pronounced instance of this happening, it's definitely not not the only one. If random crits are turned off, there's almost no reason to use the stock shovel or kukri over weapons like the Market Gardener or Bushwhacker. So at least on a base level, I can see why Valve would make this change in the first place. So if we don't want there to be two different versions of weapons depending on the server you're on, what's the best solution? Well, we've already shown that a universal damage penalty isn't the way to go, so what about applying unique penalties to each weapon depending on their intended function? Well, the disappointing reveal in this video is that's exactly what Valve already did. Back in 2011, when the change was originally proposed, 
there were several weapons that were direct upgrades from stock on crit disabled servers. But over the years, Valve slowly caught on to this fact and gave each weapon with the no random crit stat a minor but noticeable downside to balance it out. Out of the six weapons that Valve chose to make this change to, only one of them could still be considered a direct upgrade to stock when crits are off. The other five, as well as every other melee in the game added since then that can't randomly crit have all been given minor downsides that don't detract from the overall function of the item. The Bushwhacker has a damage vulnerability, the Market Gardener fires slower, the swords take longer to deploy and holster, and the Neon Annihilator sucks anyway so no one really cares. The Southern Hospitality did also technically get a downside, but it's the only one that I consider to be too niche to actually impact the weapon it's on in any meaningful way. So if you're playing against a team without Scorch Shot Pyros, it's really no sweat off your back to run. Now you could make the argument that downsides like a minor damage vulnerability and a slower swing speed still aren't meaningful enough to make stock worth picking over these weapons, and I definitely tend to agree. So instead of just giving minor nerfs to the weapons without crits, I think the ideal solution would be to give each stock weapon its own utility. I know that stock is supposed to be the consistent fallback option and that giving it a unique function would run counter to this idea, but only two out of the seven classes who use the basic melee template ever get serious use out of stock. And really, that's only because Sniper and Demo Man don't have many choices to begin with, so it's less that stock is great and more that all the other options are either bad or too situational. As for what utility you could give to each of the stock melee weapons to make them worth using, I plan on making a series where I suggest rebalances for TF2's worst weapons, so I'll save all the ideation for there. The only other thing that I want to mention in this video that didn't have a chance to come up naturally is the weirdness of the Scotsman Skull Cutter, specifically why it can randomly crit while the rest of the swords can't. I was under the impression that the three stats that defined a sword were longer range, slower switch speeds, and the inability to crit, but I guess the last of these just isn't part of the sword archetype considering that the Skull Cutter doesn't have it despite having the other two, which has always seemed almost unintentional to me. Don't get me wrong, I love being able to chop people for 244, but even I have to admit that having random crits on top of extra range and a damage bonus is a bit silly. Consequently, this puts the Scotsman Skull Cutter in the reverse situation as the Southern Hospitality. On crit-enabled servers, it's among the better swords you can run considering its potential to one-shot nearly anyone, but if crits are disabled, it's almost never a good choice in any loadout. It's a consistent damage dealer, sure, but it just doesn't compare to utility from the Islander and the half Satoichi. While I think the Skull Cutter being able to crit is dumb, I don't necessarily think it needs a nerf as it is, but if Valve ever went through with turning off random crits and casual, I definitely think it would need a buff to stack up to the rest of Demo's melees. So to answer the question at the start of the video, was Valve's change a good idea? It's complicated. While simply swapping no random crits for a damage penalty regardless of the weapon is a poor idea, I do think that taking measures to bridge the balance gap between the servers that have random crits enabled and the ones that don't was a smart move on Valve's part. And considering that they eventually did give these weapons downsides tailored to their function, I think they came to the same conclusion. While this isn't much of a problem nowadays, I definitely do remember the complaints that the Market Gardener and the Power Jacked were direct upgrades from stock on certain servers. Why use the shovel if you could use the same thing that also rewards good players? Like the changes or not, I'm glad Valve agrees that random crits shouldn't affect the way you play the game. And who knows, maybe someday our dream will come true and we'll finally get to see the end of random crits and casual. Anyway, I know this was a slightly different video than what's normally in my ballpark, but stuff like this is super interesting to me. If you know of any other random blips in TF2's history that would be interesting to look at, feel free to send them my way. This game has a surprisingly rich history, and it's cool looking at the minor changes and experiments that made the game how it is today. Not all of them were perfect, but at least Valve didn't let the caber do random crits. God help us all. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like. If you hated this video, you can let me know by writing hate messages on the wall of Dust 2 with a negev, and most importantly, have a good one.